Hello. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Wikimedia ecosystem as a key component of an open science landscape. This is part of the JROS 2020 conference. You can find the slides on Zenodo. The DOI is indicated here. And from the slides, there is also a link to the Slack channel that can be used for discussion. Some brief facts about me. I'll skip over them. You can visit at your own leisure. And now to the structure of the talk. Open science landscape is something that you all probably have some familiarity with, and um, I will use that to introduce the Wikimedia ecosystem as a similar level of granularity. I will then uh, look at interactions between the open science landscape and the Wikimedia ecosystem. I will also represent research in a different fashion um, via the research cycle and look at interactions with the Wikimedia ecosystem. And then I will break those interactions down into those that involve Wikimedia doing or having or communicating something about research, then research about Wikimedia, Wikimedia using research, and research using Wikimedia. And then I'm looking forward to the Q&A. Let's start. Here we have a depiction of the research ecosystem where in the middle you have some basic needs that have to be fulfilled for the actors to be acting. And those actors, um, they are then surrounded by another layer of essentially infrastructure, although this um, also would fall into policies. And those uh, then live in a broader societal context or even environmental context. And of course, there are all sorts of interactions here. And if you act as missing, uh, it's just a, a bird's eye view on the matter. Um, this doesn't say anything about openness, but basically it means that you can easily inter uh, travel, information can easily travel uh, within this space here. Um, and so open science would mean that whatever is produced in terms of data, code, and media um, is openly licensed. There is an open process for the research projects. Uh, the projects are open to participation by essentially anyone, and that there is some version control going on so, uh, that is logged in public. Now, uh, if we look at the Wikimedia ecosystem, um, we uh, will notice that the criteria here, or, or they can be described in essentially the same manner, using the same criteria, uh, with uh, linguality being some sort of a differentiator. While open science is mostly monolingual or English plus one language or something like this, uh, Wikimedia is decidedly multilingual and has uh, content and is actively being edited in about 300 languages. Um, and this content is organized roughly by those languages, but also by information channel. So you have Wikipedia as the encyclopedia, you have Wikimedia Commons as the media repository, Wikisource as a, an archive, and then an entire ecosystem here, um, for instance, including Wikidata, Wikiversity, and Wikispecies. Um, most of those are organized by language. So there are about 300 um, Wikipedias, there are also multiple language versions of Wikisource and uh, Wikivoyage and, and so on. Um, what's interesting in comparison to the research landscape is, whereas the latter is largely organized by disciplines, Wikimedia uh, channels or platforms are usually not organized by disciplines, with the main difference being Wikispecies, which is just about species. Now, um, Let's look at the interactions. Actually, uh, this is a complex picture. And so um, instead of drawing all the different interactions, I've just put a tick mark uh, where uh, there is at least one example that I know of uh, where I get from any of those tick marks to the other side. In many of those cases, there are actually tens or hundreds or thousands or sometimes even millions of such examples. Uh, but the point is, essentially any element of the research landscape has counterparts in the Wikimedia landscape. 
and uh, vice versa. Um, so um, maybe we can represent those interactions in a different fashion. So let's have a look at the research cycle. Here's a depiction of the research cycle. So you, program, you can start anywhere. Suppose you have an idea, you develop the idea, you try to get some funding. If you're lucky, you do get some. Then uh, you plan the research in more detail. You record some things, some observations, some data. You process what you got. You publish it. Someone's going to read it. This will inspire new ideas and so on. And then there is some auxiliary activities like teaching, outreach, uh, all sorts of support, including the one that we're discussing here at JROST, and there's administration. Um, so in addition to the things we've ha seen before, this means here there is openness at every step, and there is also open interactions with the satellite activities. So now let's put this together with the Wikimedia ecosystem, and unfortunately, um, but also to the point of this talk, there are interactions between each step of the research cycle and the Wikimedia platforms. And those interactions, uh, just as uh, with the research landscape before, they have a, a kind of trivial solution in that those platforms have content about these uh, elements of the research landscape or the research cycle. But uh, I'm actually ignoring those trivial solutions here. Um, so there are other interactions here as well. And now let's look at some of those examples. So um, here is one of those uh, more or less trivial uh, examples, but it actually brings together um, content in, a, in an interesting fashion. So uh, Scolia is a tool that provides scholarly profiles that are based on Wikidata, uh, so structured, linked, open data. Um, and combines that with um, information from Wikipedia and uh, media from Wikimedia Commons uh, to create profiles of people, of organizations, of topics, of events, publications, and so on. Um, and this runs on the Wikimedia cloud infrastructure. Then Wikimedia is using research. So here we have an example of the distribution map of a genus of frogs. The, most, the two most recent publications on a topic both described two new species, and so they say uh, the, the total of species in the genus is four. And the only place where you can find the correct number is actually Wikimedia platforms, especially uh, Wikimedia Commons. Then uh, in the inverse, research about Wikimedia is actually largely focused on Wikipedia, and it, within that, largely on the English Wikipedia, but there are a good number of exceptions. So uh, one of them here is where they looked on, uh, looked at um, articles in multiple Wikipedias that are about biological species. And then they looked at how uh, seasonal variation in uh, the abundance or behavior of those species is covered in different Wikipedia languages, and then they looked at where uh, on the planet, especially in terms of latitude, those languages are primarily being spoken, and they correlated that with um, Wikipedia page views um, in those languages. And you, and you can see that there is some sort of a correlation going on here. Then there's also research using Wikimedia platforms. So here this one is using Wikidata to improve uh, semantic parsing. Uh, you can populate narratives with Wikidata events, or uh, you can actually investigate censorship, uh, censorship effects uh, while looking at uh, Wikipedias that are, for instance, blocked in certain countries. Um, or you can uh, use uh, the link pattern on Wikipedia as a measure uh, of semantic similarity between concepts. Or uh, you can look at Wikipedia as a measure for the cultural importance of global reptiles. Um, so uh, here I actually did not include an image because most of those are actually not openly licensed and this one's actually behind the paywall, uh, which is still typical for research, even though they're using 
other Wikimedia platforms uh, consciously as an open uh, resource. They don't necessarily give back to that um, ecosystem. In summary, Wikimedia projects are fully aligned with open science practices uh, regarding the openness of workflows, licenses, collaboration, and versioning. Um, the elements of the Wikimedia ecosystem can and do interact with all parts of the research landscape and all steps of the research cycle, and also the auxiliary activities around that. And the door is wide open for further interactions and collaborations between the Wikimedia and open science ecosystems. Now I would like to thank the providers of open infrastructure, the providers of the template that I was using, the Wikimedia and Open Science communities, Alfred Sloan Foundation, and you who made it until here. And I'm looking forward to an interesting Q&A. Thank you.